It's a, a people, it's a community, it's a life, it's a heart, it's a spirit. Uh, parents of gay children say, I want my son, my gay son, to have the same opportunity to come to me and say, hey dad, I'm getting married, as my non-gay son or my non-gay daughter. What the heck would you want a picture of a tattoo of a thousand dollars on your penis for? Just... You might just need to satisfy yourself sexually alone at that point. Do I regret it? Not one bit. Did I think that I would actually take it to the next step and, and do it again? Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> and what goes into their life, how they handle it, their 12 houses, and each one of those houses has a particular function. Look into yourself, think about it, and just be whoever it is that speaks to you. Hi, and welcome to Talking About. I'm your host, J.C. Alvarez. And uh, one of the great privileges we have here is we get to introduce you to some really great and exciting new talent. And today we have with us Cesar Winston Vera, who is a fine artist. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, please. It's our, it's our pleasure. Now, give our viewers a little bit of background about yourself. Um, were you always a New York-based artist? I have been. I was born and raised in Upper Westchester, Midwestchester, Austin, New York. Uh, my parents are from South America. They actually came in 1969 um, to Westchester and kind of stayed, and that's where I and my whole family were raised in, in Westchester. Now, what sort of media do you work in? Because, I, I mean, you're a fine artist, so you work in, in, in mixed medias? Mixed media, anything I could actually get my hands on, anything that will kind of relay the message um, and support the content. Do you like to work in large scale, or, or are you sort of a, a minimal artist who, who sort of like works within a, a smaller frame, or, or, you, or just grander? Um, that's kind of interesting. When I first started off, it was kind of very intimate, small drawings, maybe small paintings. And uh, the more education and the more I did it, the more I realized I needed to kind of get bigger and bigger. Um, now I think I want to go into like mural size, oh, which really? uh, right now what I'm getting contained. It's a bit of a challenge. Going yeah, size, I think. it's hard to travel with. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Now some of your influences, um, a lot of artists were were influenced, or their styles were influenced by by uh, by you know certainly they have they have uh, they pay homage to a lot of, of previous artists. Do you have an artist that inspired you in in the in the way you work? I have, but I always made a, a, a point not to actually have art history too much um, as part of my uh, incorporation of my work. Um, but later, when I started getting my own style, I realized that there were certain people that I did not study that lots of people were relating my work to. And so then afterwards, investigating these people, I was like, wow, you know, the, this is kind of a, a connection. So there is an equal inspiration, kind of a support. and. Um, I would have to say Frida Kahlo, which is the Mexican German and, artist. And very auto autobiographical sort of work. Yes. Yeah, her mm -hmm. pain definitely, mm -hmm. her pain, her pain body, everything she was going through actually ends up on the canvas. That's kind of how she moves forward. Um, very surrealistic, um, realism, very vibrant colors. I mean, just her life is really there mm -hmm. for everyone to see. Um, next artist would be Egon Schiel, mm -hmm. uh, Austrian expressionism. Again, lots of self-portraits, um, very raw mm. um, expression, which real emotions is, I think, really where my inspiration is. Now, would you classify yourself as a, as, as a sort of like, uh, what sort of artist would, would you put yourself in if you, if you fit into a bracket? Are you more of an impressionist artist? I would say an expressionist. An expressionist. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like to kind of put feelings there. And uh, uh, I would want to say that I have a, a knack for looking and seeing people's emotions. So if I'm going to do someone's portraits, I, I want to not convey who they think they are or kind of render them wh exactly what they see in the mirror. I kind of want to render their emotion, their spirit. Now, were you were you that kid because because it's like you know we all have those experiences where you know, were you that kid who just like the moment you gravitated to paints, magic started to happen? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, I actually. Um, it, it was kind of hard from where my culture, I'm South American, Ecuadorian, um, you know, being an artist was a little difficult for my parents to kind of swallow. It was not I mean, like so many fantastic South American artists. Yeah, it was interesting. But um, they moved forward, actually, because I just would not let go. I was very headstrong. <laughs> and um, at 16, I worked with a fashion designer. Her name was Vera. She designed scarves. Mm -hmm. And I kind of interned with her and um, designed a few textile prints. And from there, went to FIT and just kept on pushing along. 
Um, but then I realized I needed to do visual arts, not apparel, not textile, but visual arts. Right, that's, that's brilliant, especially um, that you do work in such a large canvas. Um, I want to talk about your recent series. You had a series uh, called The Undercover Cross, and that's the most recent series that you've worked on, correct? Yes, it's a series actually that um, continues, continues to grow. I don't think it's ever going to stop growing. I think the concept is a great concept. I think uh, everything around it and behind it is, is just something that's going to continue feeding it. Um, my friend, who's in California, very uh, talented, and myself, kind of just started discussing a few things of what was happening in life mm -hmm. with diseases and social structure and the subculture of communities. And we decided, you know, there's a lot going on here um, with HIV and AIDS that is not really public. Right. And there are lots of people who are actually um, dealing with this in a private um, method or, or, you know, kind of with shame um, due to social structures. And so that's why we called the whole series Undercover Cross. So the inspiration for the series came from um, basically um, how, how it's perceived in, in the media and sort of like in the social structure, how HIV AIDS is, is sort of like something that, that has become sort of sheltered. And, and you're sort of putting it on the forefront, saying that you know, it's something that we need to discuss in a broader sure. form and, and that no one should carry that sort of cross with them. It's, Absolutely. It's, you know, you, know um, it's, you have the walk, you have the, the support groups, you have the movements, you have the ribbons. Um, but you don't have the T-shirt that says I'm surviving this. Mm -hmm. You don't have mm -hmm. the, the 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 pride to say that I'm someone who's actually surviving this. And most people who are dealing with it is are, they're doing it privately, and sometimes not even with the help or, or support from their friends or family. So kind of we kind of bring want to bring that to the to the forefront, and say you know this is not a shameful disease. It's it's a it's a regular yes, disease like everyone yeah, else. Because everyone and everyone is living and surviving and and going forward. We'd like to take, um, we have some of your work, and we'd like to take some, some, a peek at some of your work so, and maybe discuss some of the pieces uh, that, that you have, that you have to share with us. Um, check out the monitor and see if we can um, get some of your work up here, because it's really phenomenal work that you have, and uh, it's, it's beautiful colors. I, I mean, it's, it's like everything is, everything is, um, is also very, um, um, the strokes are very defined. Um, this this piece. What's the name of this one particularly here? Angels in Love. Okay. Um, now this piece particularly. Um, what sort of media did you work on with this one? That's on a canvas. That's mixed media again. Acrylic, chalk. Is this one um, of your bigger pieces? Yeah, it's 53. It's 53 by 48. Um, mm. It's with newspaper, live leaves. Um, it's supposed to be a demon and, a, and an angel who actually meet, and you kind of don't know what this interaction is going to lead to. It's supposed to be a working piece, and it's, it is working to be a working piece. The demon is supposed to suck the life out of the um, angel, and the leaves are eventually going to be falling off. And so wherever this hangs, which hopefully will be in a gallery soon, I would expect the gallery to let the leaves fall to the ground because the life of the angel is being taken away. So it's going to have almost a, this three-dimensional quality to it. It is three-dimensional. So yeah. it's going to have a life. Yep, and then I yeah. hope that it will continue to be built up. Right. New leaves really? need to be reapplied. Oh, that's phenomenal. Let's take a look at one of your other pieces. You certainly like to work in a lot of earth tones. I notice a lot of your pieces um, have or a lot of, of, of um, dark muted earth tones in them. Yes. Is, is, that, is that sort of like your choice? Uh, here we have a shot of you uh, working in your studio. And, and that sort of looks like the genesis of a piece. Right? It is. Um, I never actually sketch a piece, which oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. it's interesting because a lot of professors kind of got annoyed at that. I could <laughs> not bring a sketch in and say, this is what I'm going to do. But I will bring in a canvas and start drawing right on. And when I say draw, I use paint directly onto my canvas. Right. And then I go right into painting. And I continuously build and build and build. The earth tones are just the colors I'm addicted to. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> I just love them. Do you, do you think that that'll change as, as your palette sort of changes? Or is that the mood that you're in right now? You know, Picasso had his blue period. Yeah. You know, do you think that maybe? There is a possibility there. You know, <laughs> I think because my art is so raw, okay. that's how I would classify it. And it really uh, does come from my spirit. It's very honest and very true. I, if it changes, I'm going to have to go with it. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Let's, take, let's pull up another one. Because uh, they really are such great, they really are very powerful. I, I, this is one of my personal favorites, and I don't know if it's maybe because I, I it, just the color towards the left that we're looking at on our screen, um, it, but it's a very romantic quality to this piece. I saw it as really, really powerful and just, and you know, at the same time that I saw a certain sadness, what is this piece called? Denial. 
<laughs> at the, well, at the same time that I saw a certain amount of sadness in it, I saw a lot of romance in it. So it's, you know, it's, you always read into certain aspects of... But that's of, interesting that you actually, it, it, there is kind of sadness and romance. Uh, this is a person who actually is in a um, very pensive um, state of mind. Uh, the blue and the pink background are mm -hmm. actual maps. They're adhered to a piece of wood. This is painted on wood and it's not primed. That's why the figure is so dark. Oh, wow. okay. When you look at this yeah. piece closely, you'll see the wood grains. And I wanted to see exactly how the wood and the map and the paint will interact. So nothing's really treated archivally. Right. So you're actually using the textures of the materials that you're, you're painting on to sort of also like liven up the... Uh, sure. Wow. To support my content. Now, yeah. that piece was a person who actually was thinking about where they've gone and where they haven't gone. So there's kind of like the sadness and then the that, romantic that romance side, of, of where they would like to go, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant, fantastic. Now, these are all from that series, right? The one this that, is that we're all, all looking at? This is undercover series. Okay, let's, let's take a look at one, of, at one of the other pieces. And we can roll a little quicker through them. This one's, uh, oh, I love this one as well, with the little cat in the back. Now, this isn't a self-portrait, is it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. It's like, it's like uh, the there's the Frida Kahlo <laughs> in Egon <laughs> Chile. Uh, this is uh, El Llanto, which right. is in Spanish, the scream. Um, and it's really just kind of being completely ungrounded, maybe a little chaotic, and dealing with raw emotions. And then there's your little friend behind you, the little <laughs> cat, who's completely calm and saying, hey, let's get a little yeah. grounded here. Yeah, hold on to that. All right, let's take a look at another one. Now, the, you, I, I, I wanted to ask you, because a lot of the pieces, um, you, they, they, have, they, they do have a great, this one had a lot of great color in it that, that I saw. It was one of the ones that really like jumped at me as far as like having a lot of, a lot of different color schemes. I wanted to ask you about this, but what is this piece called? This one is called High Speed Love. Okay. Is it, um, I couldn't tell what the background, it looked like to me like if it looked like it was like clippings in the background or? The background like is like kind of an abstract uh, impression or, or, or just uh, of a landscape city. Right, right. It's it, really it, phenomenal. The, the act, he's laying actually on obituaries um, and his. Um, his member. Member, thank you. It is a subway map. Okay. And the, the reason it's called High Speed Love, this is about internet dating. So throughout the whole oh, background, there's okay. codes that yes. um, most common people will not know what those codes stand okay. for, like DL and um, a few other things that I kind of had absolutely no idea what they stood for right. when I started researching to do this painting. Right. Wow. That's really, do you, did you use a model for this or was this just all you, just you working off of your, you know, designing and just... I did do a few uh, references. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Let's take a look at another one. Beautiful work. It's, I mean, it's just really inspiring to see a young Latino artist who's just really, you know, New York City is the, is the center of, of the art world in a lot of aspects. And we've forgotten that there's so much fantastic artwork and artists out there that really are contributing. This is a great one as well. And is this, I, I almost took this one as being sort of the, the centrifugal uh, piece for this series. What's the title of this one? This one is called The Journey. And you're absolutely right. This is the piece that actually kind of grounds the whole collection mm. for Undercover Cross. But my, my co-partner in California has incredible pieces also that tie in all with the series. Um, but we have two different styles. So um, his pieces, I'm sure, has a grounding force also that would convey the undercover cross um, reasoning that we're trying to um, relay out there. Okay. This one is also a subway map, and uh, the, oh, uh, yes, the three-dimensional yeah, yeah. is the obituaries. And this is kind of like a uh, background is like Westchester, Manhattan kind of meeting. And this is really to convey that, you know, you don't know who's actually out there carrying a cross. And when you bump into them, and, and you might get annoyed because they bumped into you or you're trying to get into the subway and they won't let you in. You, the, everyone is carrying their cross right, yeah, and you need to kind of respect the fact yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge city. It's like, you know, we're all neighbors. When you look at it in the aspect of like, you know, we should all contribute in a certain way. Sure. And we're all, we're all part of a system. That's phenomenal. I, really, I, I was really, really taken by it. Now, all the pieces that, that you brought for us, you recently had a showing, correct? In downtown? I did. At Pace University, I had a showing. Do you do uh, those often? I do it as often as I possibly can. Yeah, I'm um, trying to do at least one every few months. Um, before that, it was in New Rochelle um, where the angels hung. Um, that was kind of interesting because New Rochelle, was a, uh, it's a Catholic school. So okay. for them to see two men embrace was a little difficult, but um, they stood strong to it. The curator stood strong to it. 
and you found a lot of support in the community as far as like and a, a great response to the pieces as well? Definitely. Um, there was one piece at um, Pace, um, which is Constraining Zen, which is also part of the um, Undercover Cross, which um, was incredible. It had great feedback. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's, that's also really nice to hear that, that the pieces were so well received because they really are phenomenal work. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, really great. Now, there's also a documentary that you worked on uh, with your partner, with your, your co-producer, and it's, it's the, the documentary is called The Undercover Cross, and it's a series of stories. Uh, I, from what I gathered, I only saw a snippet of it. You all gathered intimate stories from, from individuals and, and sort of like had them sort of like, it's very raw. It's a very raw raw sort of uh, documented t to sort of like have someone really bear themselves in, in, in that way. People revealing um, their experiences about HIV AIDS either from themselves or from loved ones. Sure. Yeah. and That's exactly what we wanted. I, again, it ties in with the raw art. Um, we have mothers who have children who, who are dealing with this. We have uh, nieces, uh, lovers, uh, people themselves who are dealing with it, and people, um, believe it or not, who have it and deal with it completely uh, unique, mm -hmm. um, which we kind of wanted to also show. There's, there's, you know, different perspectives to to this. Were there disease. were there any stories that really surprised you in in gathering all these anecdotes for the documentary that were just sort of like you, you really were really taken by those that that individual story? I think every single one did as a collection. Right. Um, it just added so much more perspective. You know, when you get to know a few people, when you've lost a few people, you have your perspective, you have maybe your support group or, or just things that you actually know and relate to. Um, but when you speak to mothers and you speak yes. to, to mm -hmm. nieces and nephews, that's, that perspective I never um, was exposed to and it was in interesting. Was there a unique thread in the stories that, that you, you both gathered that r sort of like you found in everyone's experience was something that was, that was similar? I think everyone kind of relayed on how important it is to communicate mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. they were going through. Um, e we either as a person who was being affected or a person who's infected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really brilliant. Did you guys, uh, ha now the documentary, um, if anyone wanted to, to see the documentary, is there somewhere they can go to check it out? Or? Sure. There's the Undercover Cross website, which is www.undercovercross.com. Excellent, fantastic. And um, have you shopped it out to festivals? Is there is there another uh, venue, or it are you guys considering uh, taking it anywhere else? Well, it was um, shown um, at the Oakland Film Festival in mm -hmm. California. Um, had a great reception. I um, can imagine. I was, I was wondering how the I wanted to ask you how the audience reacted to yeah. the. Uh, Incredible, to because there is a great. Um, diverse group within the actual documentary. You know, mm -hmm. you have Caucasian, you have African Americans, you have Latinos, you have wealthy, middle-aged, um, young. There's an incredible, I mean, th it just really shows that this disease absolutely has no barriers. Right, right. Now, did the documentary in any way um, sort of like influence your artwork? Um, were there stories that you heard that sort of inspired a piece? Well, I, w I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> really? So yeah. you basically the piece is sort of like, your artwork sort of like stands on its own aside from the documentary. It was almost as if these two separate projects which, which were connected had separate lives? Sure. Really? Okay, mm -hmm. great. Wow. And I think like the third project that we're working on right now, which is an installation, we're trying to gather a space where people can actually walk through a building space and kind of feel the process of the disease, wow. walk through the disease itself through everyone's sort of shared experience, or is it just going to be sort of like your artwork uh, reflective of these experiences? Like, is it going to be a video installation, or? Well, or there will be some video, there will be some on hands, oh, there will be ambitious. working pieces. And I, I, most of our pieces, actually, we want the viewer to um, bring something to the piece. Even my artwork, I want the viewer, I invite the viewer to bring their emotions to my pieces. I don't want my pieces to relay that, right, so exactly. obviously. Now, I certainly don't want to, um, I, I, want, I want our audience to know how to reach you if they, if they want to check out some more of your artwork. Do you have a website that they can visit? Sure. It's www.cwvera.com. Because, you know, now without, without the internet, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like nothing. And it's such a great avenue to be able to have yeah. your work viewed in that, in that regards as well. And are you planning, um, are there going to be any other showings? Or if, if someone wanted to contact you, is that the best way to, to that reach That would you? be the very best way. And I have, I have absolutely 
I am completely open to helping other artists. I love collaborating with other artists. Yeah, it seems it seems like the effort, especially with the documentary, was was a collaborative effort, and and it seems that the pieces that that you describe, in conjunction with the part with your partner that you're working with, are sort of like it's a very interesting thing. It's it's like I almost I think Picasso and Monet had something similar going on at some point. If, if I my, my history may be off, where they sort of like competed in pieces. You know, sure. they, they they sort of like showed each other pieces. I could be totally wrong, <laughs> but. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. A lot of artists have. A lot, uh, I, a lot of artists have shared studio space. They, right. they feed off each other, which is, is really the, the way to go. Yeah. The competition is not, it shouldn't be there. Now, as a member of the art community in New York City, do you, do you think New York is moving back into that direction of that bohemian art style where, where we're sort of like coming back into the center of the art world? I think so. I really do. And I, I, I kind of would like to be part of that again. I mean. Well, you are a part of that. Well, uh, yeah, consider yourself part of <laughs> part of you. that movement. I, I certainly, I certainly would consider you part of that. I want to be part of that movement when it is full fledged. I want to yes. be in it. Yeah, yes. uh, but I think you're absolutely right. I think we're at that um, the eve of that movement from happening. I think it's it's about time. Now, so, uh, the, uh, the one question I do want to ask you is in regards to uh, art and and education and and uh, a lot of there are a lot of students out there that really. I mean, you were very lucky. You really pursued your art and went to school and so forth. Um, but you know, in the, in the educational system, especially in New York City, a lot of art arts get cut from the program early on. What would you recommend to like you know that 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 young artist out there that's sitting out there, probably watching this and, and saying, you know, I, I have this skill, but you know, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? I, what would you what would you say to that young artist? I would suggest never giving it up. Mm -hmm. Not not at one point at 16, I had you know family conflicts and in, in regarding to in regards to my art. Um, I also had financial problems going to school. I just did, by hook or crook, I was going to get my education and do my art, either or. Without my education, I still continued doing my art. Um, at 16, I was out in the village selling t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it, it was whatever I could get my hands on. I would sure. paint and I would, I would push. And the only thing I would suggest and recommend um, is anyone who's going to do art, do it honestly, from the spirit, and don't think or worry about anyone ever purchasing it or reviewing it or critiquing it. Do it from your heart and it, it's going to move by itself. Yeah, and that's, and that's the best way for it to be to sort of like reach mass consumption when you do do it from the heart because it doesn't matter what anyone says about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's your expression, it's your, your history, your art. So it's certainly very, very important that, um, that we continue in that, you know, to celebrate the artist in that regards. Because oftentimes, you know, especially in this day and age, we're, we're so quick to like, you know, put someone on a pedestal and knock them down. Absolutely. You know, and that's that's a very frightening, frightening thought. Now, I did want to ask you about your family. They must support you now, as far as like, you know. Complete support. <laughs> Complete support. Uh, think about my my mother. Her name is Esperanza. My father's <laughs> name is is Olhead, and they come from a very small town in Chone, Ecuador, mm -hmm. and uh, they've come a very long way. There, there's seven of us. There's three boys, four boys. I'm sorry, and three girls. Um, and they had a lot to deal with. My mom worked in a sweatshop. She was a seamstress. Right. Um, and, you know, being an common, artist common was Common stories, yeah. Common yeah. stories to the Latino culture. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. being an artist was not a moneymaker. Lawyer, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. doctor, yeah. not an artist. Well, do something safe. Yeah, Come definitely. On, please. But um, yeah. today, my mom is like, I love your artwork, and she comes to every exhibit. Oh, really? Yep. Her that, must, that must be a really powerful moment, like when you have your mom just looking up at, uh, at something that you've done and... Yeah, especially the kind of little er erotic paintings. That's a little uh, well, unnerving, but she's very supportive. Is yeah. there is there one that she just really just oh I can't look at that one. There's one <laughs> I've never shown her. Yes. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Okay, you can show me that one. <laughs> <laughs> and your and your father must be like also is elated to like you know. Absolutely, um, he's come a long way. He yeah. needs a Virginia Slims. <laughs> he's come a long way. He um, every time I see him, you know, he's he's great. He tells me about this artist he meets. Anywhere in the supermarket or something. I met this artist, and he wasn't as good as you, but he was all right. <laughs> Thanks, <I> mean, Dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. That's really that's really important that you know you, you do have the support from your family, in uh, in getting your your message and your art out there because because it is an important message, um, and um, and you know it, it's like sometimes art for art's sake is fantastic, but when art has a distinct message and it's it's really trying to reach an audience and educate, that's very powerful, and and you are communicating a very powerful message to the community. That um, that we kind of like tend to put on the back burner. Sure, mm -hmm. it's something that doesn't want to kind of be viewed or discussed, 
and uh, when you create beauty out of something that's not so beautiful yeah. and you look at it and you're not sure really what you're looking at and then you realize it, it's, it's kind of a sneaky way to get the message across but yeah. I kind of like doing that. And very inspiring because it's like, you know, th there, are, there are so many people out there, you know, living with HIV AIDS and, and it's, you know, it's inspiring to let them know that, you know, it's, you know, keep, keep it up. It's like, sure. you know, there's, there's no reason, you know, go forward. There's, there's art in every day. And, uh, and you certainly have, have brought that to us. And, and I really appreciate it that, that you are doing what you're doing. Uh, what's next for you? You said the installation, you know, do you have a grander, grander scheme in mind of, of something coming down the pipe? Um, friends keep on telling me to start marketing myself, but I'm not sure exactly how I feel about well, that. Well, you know, it's like then, then you get all, like, then you'll be on T-shirts and cups yeah. and stuff, and it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> I think I kind of still want my, my, my paintings and, and my installations and the documentary to be an intimate um, experience. Um, no matter how big it grows, it still will be an intimate experience. But once it does go into a T-shirt or, or a mug, that intimacy is lost. Well, yeah, especially especially with this kind of message, where you do want your audience sort of like to focus in on on something. Sure, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah, you know, it's, it's mass consumption sometimes isn't so. Don't <laughs> knock it. Yeah, don't <laughs> knock it. You know, but I hope to one day eventually just continue growing in in scale, larger paintings, and hopefully a mural. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Adorning adorning a, a wall in in Manhattan sure. somewhere. Well, that's that's very ambitious, but I have no doubt that coming down the pipe, we're going to be hearing more about you and, uh, and seeing more of your work. Thank it you. is really, really fantastic. Now, once again, what's that website that people can check you out on? www.cwvera.com. Okay, and also, uh, in case anyone wants to uh, know more about the documentary, sure. what's that? And we could send them a copy also. Okay. That's uh, undercovercross.com. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, this is one of the best parts of my job here is, is to be able to, like, you know, introduce, you know, people like you to the people out there. And um, thank you for coming by. Thank you very much we for really, inviting really me. We really, really appreciate it, yeah. And uh, that's been uh, Talking About, and I'm JC Alvarez, and stick around and see us again.